Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today, I'm at Lake Norman State Park. I haven't been here, <laughs> it's been a couple months at least. Um, so it's really nice to be back. I love this park for a couple of reasons. Number one, brilliant areas to set up photo stations. I mean, there's, you just have so many different choices. Even in the middle of the summer when it's busier, there really aren't that many uh, people out here. There's always a little room to spread out and experiment with antennas. And uh, number two, they have a really good trail network here that I like. And I'm hoping today to put in maybe a 30 to 45 minute activation and then do hiking. And actually hiking is really the thing I want to do today. I uh, did a sort of a radar run yesterday of five parks in a Oh, the space of like six or seven hours. And uh, today, <laughs> today, I want to get into the hiking that I'd hoped to get in yesterday uh, because I wasn't able to do that yesterday. I just ran out of time. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take their loop. They've got a little lakeshore loop over here that's really nice and uh, should be very pleasant. But uh, today's kind of a special activation. Um, it's not my birthday or anything like that. Um, basically, um, I, uh, if you recall, if you watched uh, any of my videos last year, I may have mentioned a few times that um, I like to challenge myself uh, a little bit. Um, not in a crazy way, but I like to try to shake things up a bit. Um, I'll, I'll often do it and frustrate my own self because I kind of make things too difficult. Like yesterday, for example, on the uh, multi-park run where I did those five parks, at the last moment, I decided I wanted to do a different antenna at each park. I thought, oh, that'll make it more exciting and challenging. <laughs> well, it's challenging enough just to kind of fit in all those parks and activations. But I did end up doing that, and it was really fun doing that. Um, last year, at the beginning of the year, I decided to make a challenge for myself. And that challenge was to work, or I should say, to validate all of my parks and all of my summits with 5 watts or less. So... Um, I started that in January and it worked out really well. In fact, um, I got to be really honest with you, it didn't even feel like a challenge. Uh, it was so easy doing five watts. I never struggled, never had an issue because I didn't have enough wattage in the field. And um, I, I'm sure that a lot of that has to do with the fact that I do CW and um, five watts in CW is fantastic. Uh, so it really wasn't much of a challenge. Um, so I've carried that challenge forward to this year. And uh, this year I decided that I would do that challenge plus um, something a little more challenging than just 5 watts, which is each month, or at least 12 times this year, I want to build 12 antennas. So I'm going to build them myself and um, put them together and put them on the air. And I thought it'd be kind of a neat way to build up a bunch of, a little arsenal of, um, you know, homebrew and Maybe even, I may do a kit or two, I don't know, I may do a kit or two this year as well. Um, but basically to kind of build stuff. I love building things. Um, and so starting this one off, this is actually uh, month number one of the challenge. And I have this uh, multi-band doublet. Now, uh, if this looks familiar, it may be because you read QRPR.com. And you'll know that uh, my buddy Vlado came over uh, New Year's and... Um, I had um, previously purchased um, two of these, if you see this winder here, that's a part of a military antenna fixture. I bought it from Fair Radio Sales and I got two of these. Um, I was inspired by my buddy WD8RIF who, if you look up a video where I call it a stolen antenna last year, <laughs> It was made out of one of these fixtures. And so I bought two of them, one for me and one for Vlado. And so when he came over, he and his wife came over to hang with us, I said, hey, come over here to the uh, shed and let me pull out my antenna box and let's find some parts inside and build some antennas. So we both build the same doublet. And my challenge for the doublet was to have a doublet that would go down to 60 meters. And this one does with the Yellowcraft KX2. It does require an antenna tuner to find that impedance match. But uh, the KX2 had no problem doing it. So I'm pretty sure my Shegu radios will um, and all those things as well. And I'm sure my LDG uh, tuner would not have a problem finding matches on this. Each leg of this is 31 feet long. And I can't remember how long the feed line is. But um, this is like a military sort of twin lead feed, feed line. Um, if you look above, I'll try to remember to um, uh, 
post an article right here that you can link to, which gives a little bit more detail about this. Um, if I forget to do that, don't hesitate to put in the comments, hey Thomas, you've got to put that link in at such and such space, <laughs> and I'll do that. I'm terrible to forget those. Um, but basically, um, I've not taken this out to the field yet and put it on the air. I did work like two hunters or something after we built it. So I'm looking forward to actually using it today. Now I'm gonna do something a little different today too. Um, I've gotten so many questions from people on the West Coast saying, can you please, or request I should say, can you please go up to the higher band so we can have a chance of working you and working some of the parks you go to? And so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna start on 20 meters and maybe go up to 17 meters. If I stay busy with those, great. If not, I may move down to 30 and 40 like I normally do. But by and large, I usually do 40 meters for park activations and 20 meters for summit activations. So it'll be a little different. Um, and hopefully, uh, maybe we'll get some West Coast contacts. I don't know. But I really like doublets. I'm a little dubious of how I got the antenna up in this tree. It is wrapped around a branch that is not huge. And this fixture is not the lightest weight antenna I have. But it doesn't have to go up very high. Um, so I'm hoping I don't just pull the whole thing out when I set this up. I just shot this line up into the tree and it went way higher than I needed it to. But I was actually going for one of those bigger branches and it stopped at this one and it seems to be sturdy enough. We'll have to see if it lasts. Uh, now doublets can be a little weird and a little wonky to set up. Um, but I'll tell you how I do it because I'm probably not going to film this. Um, just because it'll take it'll take me a little while to do it but basically you can see i did a figure eight wind on both sides of the um, winder here and so i pull out one side of the doublet first then i pull out the other side of the doublet each leg and i have them in opposite directions and then what i do is i use some line and sometimes stakes but i may just use some trees that i can tie it off to but i tie off each end with a little slack in it so that as I raise it, it tightens and it basically makes an inverted V on each side. The reason you want to stake these off is what these doublets tend to do. There's two things they tend to do. Uh, number one is uh, these lines want to twist up. And, um, and so you, well, I should say that is probably the major thing because these lines want to twist and at the same time, this wants to uh, swivel around uh, in the middle. So. Um, by having those legs spaced apart, it kind of, uh, as you pull it up, it keeps it from twisting around on itself. Uh, it takes a little longer, and sometimes you have to readjust these after you get it up a certain height, but um, yeah, it works. It's not as fast to put up as an end fed antenna or anything. So anyway, I need to hurry uh, because I want to do my uh, hike. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing up, and um, uh, hopefully we can get on the air here in a second. I'll add one more thing here. Um, I actually have these little Velcro straps and I put it on the end of each side of the leg and that actually helps me do this a little quicker. And also the other thing I forgot to mention is you want to undo the feed line first so that you don't find yourself having to twist it around a whole bunch afterwards. So just pull off the feed line, then I uh, do each leg. So anyway, <laughs> let's get back to it and get on the air. Okay, before I get set up here, I'll show you what I did with the antenna. As you can see, you can probably see the center of the antenna up there. Um, <laughs> As with all doublets, you can do this with trees all around, but you always have to watch out for branches and finagle it around. And that's what I did. Actually, it was I just had to change where one of the legs uh, was attached to the tree, like this. I use this bright blue line, so it makes it a little easier for me to find it. But this goes up to one half of the doublet here. It's not touching too many things. Um, and it's basically in an inverted V configuration. It's coming down here, not really touching too many branches. This side's higher than the other, but ah, that's okay. It'll work. <laughs> as, as some people say, RF's got to go somewhere. So it'll hopefully go where I want it to. Um, okay, I'm going to set up the radio and let's go on the air. Okay, I've got everything set up here. And hopefully you can see everything all right. Um, try to get a good camera angle. I'm doing something a little different this time. Instead of using the a, the KX2's internal speaker, which <laughs> internal speakers on portable radios tend not to be that great, um, I'm using this little Sony speaker. So hopefully the audio will actually sound a little bit better. It's right here below the camera, so let's see here. First of all, let's see if we can tune up. One point one to one, that's what I like to see. Good. Good, good, good. Now let's get the key. Let's give us a go here. Oh, 
<laughs> Whoops. We'll see how my key goes today. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and start. Send CQ Poda, maybe they'll spot me. I'm not getting time to put on my gloves. You know what? It's chilly. It's not below freezing or anything, but it's cold enough that sitting here with the breeze, you feel it. I keep my hands warm. Maybe I'll do a little bit better job keying. hammer's log set up. Oh, my hands are so messy. I'm sorry. These are working hands, and this is the winter, and they're just like, my hands get so rough. Mainly I need access to my fingers too, so I can type on this little keyboard of the phone here. Let me put 20 on here, 20 meter CW. Mm, not getting a lot of action here. I may end up having to move down the band. <laughs> Either that or I'm not being spotted. <laughs> Let's see. I'll wait one more time, see if I hear back, hear back from anybody. Hang on, let's see, sorry. Everybody's a little weak today.
okay. So, so far I got six. That's not bad. But the band is quieter. In fact, it's not only quieter, it's like a little noisier than normal. I can tell you, it's not the doublet doing that. May end up going down to 30 and 40 after all. Only thing is, I'm trying to avoid actually today because I do want to keep this fairly short. I don't really want to have to skip out on a pileup. I think I got that right. So I got seven now. Only need three more to have a valid activation. Ooh, I do hear somebody in there. Thought I'd turn on the noise blanker to see if that helped out any. Let me move it back over here. Mm, I'm not hearing him now. Conditions are not good. Because you know what? This devlet actually rocks on <laughs> 20 meters. Um, so that's telling me that the conditions are pretty crappy right now. May move up to the 17 meter band, which will probably even be worse, but hey. Okay, I think that's it. Ah. 
Oh, right. Of course. Maybe that wasn't him I was hearing. Let's go ahead and send a CQ. I don't think that was him. I thought I heard K9IS. I thought I heard a 9 in there. Um, he calls me a lot. He, he's uh, one of my hunters I'm, uh, that's in my propagation footprint most of the time. He's a very, very reliable hunter, and I think that's the reason I was kind of, my head just heard that. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Man, I've this went really well, actually. 11 contacts, so I've got my valid park activation. Oh, okay. he's asking <laughs> I think that's it okay yep I don't need to put him in here again I think you just want to make sure I got his call sign I hope so need to hear that first part. keeps fading at the wrong time. <laughs> oh, this is so difficult.
Oh, I just can't hear that number. Let's see. Sorry, dude, I can't get you, I don't think. I'll really try to do weak signals. Got him. just completely lost him. Right when I got his call sign too, I think. Okay, I heard a, I heard an exchange. Oh no, don't tell me this is a park to park too. <laughs> I won't be able to get that. Okay, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> it's great to get you in there. I I'm sure I heard you earlier. I'm sure that 
I heard you up here. Okay, let's move up to the 17 meter band. Let me change my logs here, make notes. Uh, if I get one person on 17 meters, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's probably gonna be more dead than 20. Usually, this is not always the case, but usually when 20 struggling, 17 is gonna struggle even maybe more, uh, but we'll go for it anyway. I've got a little bit more paper, a little bit more time. In fact, what time is it? 3.30, I'll go for about 10 minutes. That's about the max I can do. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this will tune up. Yep. Yep, one to one. There we go. You know what I'll do? I'll actually move up the power. Why not? Right? I don't know if I have enough battery in this to do it or not, to be honest. <laughs> since it's bad conditions and since I've got 10 watts out of the KX2, why not? You know, I want to get my one contact here. Uh, let's see. Ooh, while I'm doing this, I can take a picture. Which is something I want to do. Whoops. Because I always forget pictures, <laughs> but I don't do them. I'll take a picture with my log too. too confident that I'm going to get anyone here, if you can't tell, but now if I want to summit, I bet you I would. <laughs> that altitude really, really helps, I think. I think the people passing by me are like, wait a minute, who's he talking to? Come on, I just want one contact, that's all. Yeah, there wasn't enough battery power to even do 10 watts. And that's because I've probably done three activations on the same battery, so I can't complain. What it'll do is it'll run 10 watts for about, back when I used to do this with single sideband, it would run 10 watts for about an hour and 15 minutes before it would go down to five watts. Um, but since I've been doing CW, I never really run it over five watts. This was <laughs> the first time I've turned it up to 10 watts in a long time. But it's not bad to do that some days when the conditions are bad or whatever and you got the juice to do it in your battery. I could flip out this battery. I've got another battery in here. I can switch it out and I could do 10 watts, but it's not worth doing that. I'd rather just kind of see if I can make one contact. That's all I want is one. himself and has Morse code in front of him. Okay, we'll do a couple more calls and I'm probably going to pack up because I really, really, I cannot not get in a, I really want to hike today. <laughs> Yesterday my day kind of flew away with me and I didn't, I didn't get a hike in. Okay, one more call. One more call. 
At Washington, contact was a real struggle. Let me know in the comments, was it easier for you to, um, was it easier for you to copy that? I mean, listening to it through the speaker, probably having headphones on, listening to it, you may be able to copy that a whole lot easier than I could in the noise, but 20 meters was really noisy. Now, the only other explanation I could find for that is if there's some kind of QRM around here that's causing that, but I've never had that before. And sometimes the bands just can be a little bit on the noisy side. There's some kind of weird weather fronts and things out there right now in the United States. Maybe that's what's causing it. I don't know. Um, but uh, normally it's a little easier to hear than that. This has been a really fun activation. A lot of weak signal work in here. And um, so that was kind of fun to do too. I actually love digging out weak signals. The challenging part is with this is I like doing weak signal work with headphones on. They make it so much easier to hear everything. But I wanted you to have audio uh, for the video. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm a little nervous about doing it, but I'm going to use my inline recorder next time, I think. And, uh, so I can keep earphones in. You can hear the audio later and I'll mix in the audio with the video clip. It means one extra step when I'm doing my video stuff, but Hey, you know, <laughs> I got to experiment with a lot of other ham radio operators do that. And it sounds pretty good. Um, I actually think the speaker sounds really good, but, um, in a case like today, it would have really helped me out, especially working some of those weaker stations had I um, just had my earphones in. Anyway, until next time, here's wishing everyone seven threes. And um, when you go out there, uh, just treat, each, ev treat everyone with kindness. And um, if you find a new ham radio operator needs a little help, maybe try to give them some help. Everybody needs a mentor now and then. And a good Elmer. So um, take care. And until next time, seven threes. Anyway, thank you very much again for joining me. This is not the last time you'll see this doublet, for sure. I'm going to put it up, probably, I'm thinking of taking it to, um, there are a couple different parks I want to take it to, and I want to operate it on 60 meters. I want to see if I can do a whole activation maybe on 60 meters with this antenna. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun to do. So it's not the last you've seen of this antenna, but it's kind of fun starting it out and cutting its teeth on 20 meters on a really bad day. And I hope you got a little bit of nice weak signal work in today, because that's really what we were doing here. Uh, I was listening to much weaker signals than normal, so... Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you get a chance, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, it just lets me know how many people are kind of watching. Um, as always, there are no ads in my videos or anything. Um, so, um, yeah, you don't even have to have your ad blockers on. <laughs> anyway, if you get a chance, go out and play radio as soon as you can and help others who want to do it too. Uh, maybe be a mentor for someone. It's always a good thing to do. And in general, just everybody treat each other with kindness. So um, anyway, until next time, here's wishing everyone seven threes.